I am pleased to say that Taiwan will be receiving 700, 750,000 doses of the vaccine as part of the first tranche of doses. It was critical to the United States that Taiwan be included in the first group to receive vaccines because we recognize your urgent need and we value this partnership. We'll be meeting with Taiwan's leadership this morning to better understand Taiwan's needs and carry those messages back to Washington. I know in the days ahead, the Biden administration will work to ensure Taiwan receives its shipment in a safe and effective U.S. vaccines as soon as possible. This will help save lives and bring us closer to ending this pandemic once and for all. In Taiwan, um, I want to begin by just mentioning something that I think most people know, but it's always important to um, reiterate. The United States has a long history of advancing security, prosperity, and democracy in the Indo-Pacific area. We are an Asia-Pacific nation. We have been in this critical region of the world for centuries, and we will be here in the future for centuries to come. Over 25 years ago, I was deployed to this region as part of a United States Marine Corps amphibious task force, specifically to the Taiwan Strait, during a very challenging and critical time for Taiwan's democracy on the eve of Taiwan's first presidential election. That was an important demonstration of American resolve and commitment to Taiwan's security, prosperity, and democracy. And now I am honored to be back in Taiwan with this strong bipartisan delegation of United States senators. Under our constitution, the Senate has a critical role in American foreign policy. And the Taiwan Relations Act is an important demonstration of this senatorial role. That act makes it the United States policy to provide assistance to Taiwan to enable it to resist all kinds of coercion. American support for Taiwan's prosperity, democracy, and security remains rock solid and is very bipartisan, as you can see from this delegation of United States senators, Republicans, and Democrats. This support also extends to the health of the people of Taiwan. Last year, a global pandemic came from Wuhan, China, that was characterized by a lack of transparency and a lack of international cooperation by the Chinese Communist Party. Today, in dramatic contrast, the United States is leading international relief efforts in an open and cooperative spirit with our friends and partners and allies to bring relief from this global pandemic with tens of millions of highly effective vaccines, many developed with American ingenuity to all parts of the world, including Taiwan. And we are doing this in close coordination with our partners and friends and allies like Japan, who also recently announce significant vaccines to the people of Taiwan. Let me conclude by emphasizing a point that Senator Duckworth already mentioned. This is a two-way street with regard to friends and partners who look out for each other. And we in the United States remember these things. Look at my mask. There's over 10 million masks that came from Taiwan to the United States at the early stages of this pandemic. This is one of them. By the way, if you can't see it, it says love from Taiwan. It's a nice flag of both, uh, representing both of our peoples. So now I say, this is love from America in return. And we are very pleased to be here making this important announcement on vaccines. Thank you. Thank you very much, Senator Sullivan, for his words.
And also, right, right now, we'd like to invite um, the, the Honorable Senator Chris Kunz for his remarks. Thank you so much uh, for welcoming us. It is such an honor for me to join with these two tremendous uh, senators, uh, Senator Duckworth and Senator Sullivan, who have served our nation and our nation's military, whose personal stories of commitment and engagement in this region of the world are inspiring to me and many others. I serve on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, and I chair the Appropriations Subcommittee in the Senate that is funding vaccine distribution to the world in partnership with the Biden administration. As we were discussing weeks ago, our concerns about the world and about this pandemic as it continues to be a threat to health around the world, we were urging the Biden administration to work with us, a bipartisan group across the Senate and the House, to announce significant donations of vaccines to the nations in need. As you just heard from Senator Sullivan, it is a long and deep relationship between the United States and Taiwan that was made purposeful and pointed and real for us in the difficult early days of this pandemic by a gift, a contribution of 10 million masks at a moment when Americans uh, were worried about where they could find masks and where some other countries used that access to PPE to their political benefit. In this moment, we are announcing the first of what is going to be a significant uh, effort by the Biden administration and the United States Congress to provide up to 80 million doses to many countries around the world. And because Taiwan has been prevented from joining the World Health Alliance, uh, has had roadblocks put up towards its access uh, to safe and effective vaccines, we thought it particularly important uh, to celebrate the Biden administration's initiative and the support of Congress that is bipartisan in taking these effective, safe vaccines developed under the previous administration in the United States and with partnerships around the world and make certain that the people of Taiwan know. There are some countries that question whether the United States will come to the aid of our friends in Taiwan. This is a moment we thought it was urgent and important for us, Mr. Foreign Minister, to make it clear that we intend to do so. I represent the small state of Delaware. My predecessor is now the President of the United States. 42 years ago, he voted for the Taiwan Relations Act. As we were traveling, a member of our company was reading a book about the history of the Taiwan <laughs> Relations Act and sharing with us about it. Dan is ever the scholar. And it was helpful to be reminded um, that this is not a new relationship. This is not a new partnership. I was last here uh, with uh, AIT Director Christensen when we were opening uh, a beautiful new state-of-the-art uh, facility center uh, for the United States engagement here uh, with Taiwan. Um, as we return tomorrow to the United States Senate, we will be taking votes this coming week to pass a significant piece of legislation. Coming out of the Foreign Relations Committee, it was known as the Strategic Competition Act and includes provisions to make clear, again, the strength of the U.S.-Taiwan relationship as it moves through the full Senate with the support of these two senators who are on the Commerce Committee as it is being shaped and finally, hopefully, enacted. There is always the changes of legislation to come, but I'm very hopeful that we will take a strong bipartisan vote in the coming week and pass the U.S. Innovation and Competitiveness Act. It specifically recognizes the strategic importance of the U.S.-Taiwan relationship, the urgency of investing in innovation, and taking steps such as we take today with the announcement of this vaccine contribution to more tightly weave together the open societies, the democracies of the world, those that value innovation and science, those that protect inventions, and those that want to use the fruits of that science to help the world move past this terrible pandemic, not by adding strings to it, but by giving freely of what both of our societies have been able to develop. Thank you. Thank you very much, Senator Kuz, for your words. And right now, we'd like to invite Foreign Minister Joe Seru for his remarks. Senator Duckworth, Senator Sullivan, Senator Kunz, uh, AIT Director Christensen, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm so delighted and I'm so honored to be able to come to the airport to greet you, to welcome you. 
Uh, but in order for our domestic audience to understand the significance of your visit, I'll explain something in Mandarin first. Today, it's really very happy to welcome the airport to the three from the United States, the Air Force, the Air Force, the Air Force, and the Air Force. In the current world, especially in the Asian countries, the pandemic is facing another wave of the Wuhan virus. To fight the pandemic and ensure the health of people, the Taiwan government is working to expand the vaccine supply. The vaccine supply is also being reached. I would like to thank the United States for bringing Taiwan to the recently announced vaccine supply plan. I also thank the United States for the announcement of the Dakota Wars Administration. 我要特别感谢达克沃斯参议员、苏利文参议员和昆士参议员持续透过具体的行动来支持台湾，包括推动将台湾纳入美国的疫苗捐赠计划。刚刚昆士参议员也提到要纳入最新的这个美国参议院在推动的这个法案——战略竞争法案当中。那对他们的来访啊，以及所传达强而有力的支持，我在这边要特别感谢他们。我们了解，任何国家都没有办法孤军奋战对抗武汉肺炎，因此在疫情爆发的时候，台湾对于美国捐赠的这个医疗口罩和防护的装备，以协助美国第一线的医护人员。现在我们台湾绝对啊绝无仅有的这个抗疫挑战。当我们全力争取疫苗进口的同时，又必须要排除万难，确保这些救援的医疗物资。在运送过程当中，不致受到北京的阻挠。实际上，台湾对于这些阻挠并不陌生，尤其是像我们台湾在参与世界卫生组织的这个过程当中。但是，我们台湾有很多理念相近国家来给我们支持。我们了解，这不仅是关乎台湾的国际地位，也是关乎集权侵略的时候如何来保卫台湾的自由与民主。台湾处在这个全讲价值的最前线，我们必须战胜。民主才能够长存。再一次感谢达克沃斯参议员、苏立文、苏立文参议员以及昆斯参议员的支持，并且透过此次的来访的这个讯息，振奋人心的这个讯息，我们台湾和美国在自由开放的印太地区作为绝佳的这个伙伴，有许多可以作为分享交流的事情，待会我们也会继续来分享。那啊，接下来我用。英文来支持来欢迎他们，然后多一点英语上。啊、uh, ，I'm truly delighted to welcome your visit to Taiwan at this crucial moment. On behalf of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, I'm deeply honored to receive you. The world, especially Asia, is now facing another wave of the COVID-19 outbreak. To defeat the pandemic and ensure the health of our people. Taiwan's government is devoted to expanding vaccination with imported vaccines doses continuing to arrive. I'm truly grateful for the U.S. government's recent announcement to include Taiwan in its allocation plan for sharing 25 million vaccines, vaccine doses worldwide. And I would especially like to thank uh, Senator Doug Worth for the announcement you just made. I want to thank Senator Doug Worth, Senator Sullivan, and Senator Kunz for continuing to express their staunch support for Taiwan through concrete actions, including advocating for Taiwan to be included in the U.S. vaccine sharing plan. We deeply appreciate your visit and strong, very strong message of support. We understand that COVID battle could not be fought by any country alone. Therefore, in the early stages of the pandemic outbreak, Taiwan has the honor of providing PPEs to the United States just to show that we are willing to help. And now Taiwan is facing unique challenges in combating the virus. While we are doing our best to import vaccines, we must overcome obstacles to ensure that these life-saving medicines are delivered free from trouble of Beijing. The truth is Taiwan is no stranger to such troubles. China continues to try to block our international assistance or try to prevent Taiwan from participating in the World Health Organization, and we are, not strength, we are no strangers to that kind of uh, obstructionism. However, we are fortunate to have many like-minded countries showing support for Taiwan. We all know this is not just about Taiwan's international status, but about sustaining freedom and democracy in the face of autocratic aggression. Taiwan is standing at the front line of our shared values, and Taiwan must win these battles 
so democracy can prevail. I would like to express my appreciation to Senator Tapworth, Senator Sullivan, and Senator Kuhn's support and for bringing such an encouraging message to Taiwan through this visit. As good partners in the free and open Indo-Pacific, Taiwan and the United States sure do have a lot to share with each other. And meanwhile, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. The people of Taiwan will overcome COVID-19 like we have overcome all other challenges with strength, togetherness, and perseverance. Thank you. Thank you very much, Foreign Minister Joseph Wu, for his remarks. Thank you very much, Foreign Minister Joseph Wu, for his remarks. Thank you very much, Foreign Minister Joseph Wu, for his remarks. Thank you very much, Foreign Minister Joseph Wu, for his remarks. Thank you very much, Foreign Minister Joseph Wu, for his remarks. Thank you very much, Foreign Minister Joseph Wu, for his remarks. Thank you very much, Foreign Minister Joseph Wu, for his remarks. Thank you very much, Foreign Minister Joseph Wu, for his remarks. Thank you very much, Foreign Minister Joseph Wu, for his remarks. Thank you very much, Foreign Minister Joseph Wu, for his remarks. Thank you very much, Foreign